So the RX 6600 XT just launched from Radeon, and usually going into a graphics card launch, the number one thing you'd want to discuss is, well, performance, and therefore, price performance. But honestly, we've known the rough time frame this card would be coming out and how it would perform almost a year ago. And well, I was, for example, still, though knowing the rough performance, very excited to see like the RTX 3080 launch reviews and the, uh, I don't know, RX 6900 XT launch reviews. You know, I was excited last year to see the per percentage point down to the decimal place differences between these cards so we could openly talk in detail about what's worth what. That's just not... That just doesn't really make sense anymore in 2021. I feel like the people that are still clinging to talking about GPU launches as if nothing's changed over the past year are, well, well, it's just a waste of time. We know that it's around a 5700 XT in performance, the 6600 XT that is. Then we know that whatever, we don't need to know to the decimal place. We just need to know if you can get your hands on this. And if compared to other products on the market, this is worth buying. That's really the conversation now. You're missing the point if you talk about the 6600 XT or really any NVIDIA or AMD or soon Intel graphics card launch through the perspective of what we wish it costed relative to a previous gen, because this is not a normal generation and it sucks, but honestly, you're just banging your head against a wall if you do that. And I tried to illustrate this in a poll I put out on Twitter. A, a lot of tech tubers were putting out polls that were like, do you expect or plan to buy a 6600 XT tomorrow? And of course, like 90% or more of people said no, but honestly, I don't understand the point of that poll on Twitter. You might as well ask, are you upset? Because everything's priced shittily right now. So what's the point in putting out a poll that doesn't ask the real question? I asked if the 3060 and the 6600 XT were priced the same, which one would you get? Because that's the real question. Well, in addition to the other option, which... Yeah, let's take a look at the horror show on eBay right now, which is a menagerie of ridiculous prices on used old products. You see, that's what AMD's looking at when they price a graphics card, what NVIDIA's looking at when they price a graphics card right now. Not just how they're priced against their competition, because their competition is selling out instantly just like themselves. They're looking at what to price, a, how to price a card next to used graphics card prices that are hilarious. And that's why in my poll on Twitter, I refuse to put a none of the above option because that's not the question I'm asking. I think most people should be taking a break from shopping on the market right now because it's insane, but that, you know what? There are people that need a new graphics card. There are people that use their GPUs for work. There are people that have recently had a graphics card break. There are people that might have something like a GTX 960 that just isn't playing games well anymore. And those people want an option. And what are their options? It, it, well, in the low end, it's basically a 3060, a 6600 XT, or some horribly priced last gen card that actually costs more on the used market. That's why I provided those three options because that's the real question to be asked. Whether you like it or not, that's the state of the market. That's the real options people have if they have to buy a card right now. Not if they want to, nobody wants to buy a card right now. And yeah, you'll notice this video came out far after we had official benchmarks. This isn't the main focus, the performance of the 6600 XT. I, I want to tell you guys about what's coming with market prices and volume over the next few months. But I guess first, let me talk about the 6600 XT performance for a little bit because it should be expected in a video around a new graphics card launch. So in some ways, I actually find the 6600 XT to be impressive. In some games, it honestly performs like a 3060 Ti or even sometimes beats a 3070. But, you know, that's usually in a game that is not the typical performance levels you would see for its image quality. And as much as it can be impressive to see the 6600 XT punch far above its expected weight in 1080p, in other games, it is just performing like a 3060 and of course we're talking about 1080p if you go above 1080p it usually loses to what are typically weaker cards in 4k and even in 1440p so yeah 
I guess what I will say about the 6600 XT after looking at a few reviews is this. The 6600 XT is for sure the strongest card any pure 1080p gamer should consider getting if they have PCIe 4.0. I mean, everything else is hilariously worse price performance, even if MSRP was a real thing right now. And even something stronger, you know, than like a 6800 XT, it's like you're not even getting double the performance for like two, three, four, five times the price. If you're gaming in 1080p, the 6600 XT is kind of an insane level of performance to the point that everything else in the market doesn't really make sense, which I'm sure is what AMD was hoping reviewers would come to the conclusion of when they were reviewing this card. Having said all of that, though, we also need to point something else out. 1080p has been easy to master for a long time, and honestly, in most of the latest games, Ultra is somewhat indistinguishable between high or even medium settings, and that's because there's not enough pixels on screen to show the difference. You know, outside of things like ray tracing or really specific settings, like for instance, textures, you should you just don't tell the difference between like medium and ultra now in 1080p. You shouldn't really be bragging that you can run 1080p and ultra. Most 1080p gamers are probably not afraid to turn some of the indistinguishable settings down to high or medium. And therefore, yes, it's impressive how crazy overkill the 6600 XT is in some of these games at 1080p. Most of these games could be turned down a bit and have crazy overkill frame rates anyways for a lower price or just from <laughs> last gen or last last gen cards. So I'm not really sure who the 1080p maxed out gamer is anymore if you have to pay this much. Make no mistake, if this was $300, especially if the market was normalized, I think this could have been remembered as a legendary card. But, well, what if its price is actually more competitive than people are realizing? And that's something I wanna talk about in this video, and it's something that Hardware Unbox touched on. If you actually normalize for what this will be priced at on eBay and on the street, which is the real price for most people right now, it is actually the best price performance product on the market. I mean, yes, it is dumb that this card costs probably 30 to 40% more than it should, but at the same time, the market is up 50 to 60%. And in fact, if you actually look at the launch, it is selling far closer to its MSRP or at its MSRP compared to any other launch this year. This card is not launching in a vacuum. Heck, I actually checked the micro center I used to frequent when I lived in Illinois and it was in stock at MSRP when I checked and there were other models that weren't 30, 40% more. This card was launched close to MSRP. And by the way, some insider information here, people I talked to confirmed this, that actually AMD built a bomb that allows the card to have decent profit margins at MSRP. So this isn't some kind of like market move or blip. AMD priced this card to be able to maintain around 380 to $400 for the foreseeable future for many AIBs. Now, of course, in the short term, AIBs are expected to put super high end coolers, sometimes literally ones from a 6700 XT, despite being a far lower power card, and try to get more money for it because the market's paying more money for everything right now. But that long term, this really could be a $380 card. Well, Unlike the 3060. The 3060 is going to hit this market in larger numbers this month. Already, I have multiple distributors that I'm talking to saying they've already received more 3060s up until now in August. You know, we're not even halfway through August than they've received in the previous three months combined. And they're going to receive far, far more than what they've already received within two weeks. So this 3060 flood is happening and it will hit in full force within two weeks. But even then, the 3060 isn't going to hit MSRP. Talking to these sources, the overwhelming majority of products are around $400 or higher. And it's because, as I've covered in recent videos, GDR6 costs have exploded, and this thing is basically saddled with just like an extra $72 on the cost to produce the card that it wouldn't need if it was a 6 gigabyte 
card. So not only is AMD's card able to hit MSRP more reliably than the 3060 ever will, even though there will be token drops at MSRP. Yes, there will. There always have been with Ampere, but don't get me wrong here. They are token drops. AMD is also supplying a decent amount of volume as well with many distributors having, like I said, tons of cards in stock, even hours after the cards came out. AMD is supplying a lot of these and they are supplying them at a lower price than the 3060. And so, yeah, what, what am I getting to here? Well, I'm just trying to say the 6600 XT's MSRP is far more real than the other cards it's competing with, that it isn't priced for 2019. This card is priced for 2021, and 2021 is the worst year to buy a graphics card in history. So you have to view its launch through that lens. It's very competitive against what the real price of most 3060s hitting the market are, and it's just really unfortunate that the market sucks right now because if you again if you think about it this card would be impressive the 6600 xt has a smaller die size than the 5700 xt and it's on the same n7p node yet offers higher performance on average at a like what is it like 50 watts 60 70 watts less power that's incredible this thing uses far less energy on a smaller die with more performance. This is the perfect card to do an apples to apples comparison and go, yeah, RDNA 2 is way more efficient. It wasn't about IPC. It was about driving down power at the same levels of performance, but then scaling that performance up with multiple compute units that you couldn't do so before. It could have been a legendary card, but unfortunately, everyone's just going to remember that it was another card that launched in a shitty market. As they say, there's no such thing as a bad product, just bad pricing. And the entire market is badly priced right now. The 6600 XT is simply priced for the worst market in GPU history. And just to be clear, I turned down a 6600 XT for review and analysis because I just don't give a shit anymore. I don't care. I I personally think most gamers that are, have a generation of card that's at least from Pascal or later would probably want to wait for something at or above the performance of a 3060 Ti. That's where you really feel the grunt. And I'm not really interested in reviewing anything below that anytime soon. Having said that, in 1080p, I guess the 6600 XT can be close to the 3060 Ti at times, and I just wouldn't pay a cent over $400 for it. Which, there's one more thing I want to talk about when it comes to the 6600 XT, and that's just again kind of reiterating what's going on with market forces right now. For example, I've just been told by a distributor that this person is receiving a shipment of Polaris cards, RX 570s and 580s, that are priced between $370 to $300 to $400 MSRP. No joke, these are newly produced, brand new production Polaris cards that have an MSRP of up to $400. And that's because the demand for GDR6 has exploded. GDR5 is going out of production, so these are kind of this there to replace the not going to be produced anymore 1600 series. And, well, I just think that should tell you where things are going this holiday season. In fact, from what I've heard, the 3060 flood that we're seeing in August right about now is actually not something that might be here for that long. That right now, a lot of 3060s are coming right now, but it doesn't seem like they will keep coming after September. That NVIDIA is just going to focus again on 3070 or higher levels of performance because they know that's the market they can milk the most. And so, well, that's why those Polaris cards are there. And that's also, you know, probably why AMD has a huge opening. For now, all we can really say about the 6600 XT is that if it was $300, it would be a legendary product, almost a Polaris successor. And if it's below $400, I guess it's the best option. But that's an opening. If NVIDIA is going to ignore the low-end market for the remainder of the holiday season, which it sounds like they could after the next couple months of the 3060 flood, then if AMD can keep up production like they really haven't been for this year, let's be honest, and produce a ton of these small 6600 XT dies, 
then I think they could actually fill that section. I have distributors telling me that they're very apprehensive to believe these prices will stay where they are. But if they do, they just plan to use the 6600 XT for the majority of their builds for a while now. And so, yeah. I hope this isn't a blip because the 3060 production certainly seems like one. That's because that card isn't profitable below $400 for most AIBs. And um, yeah. While the 6600 XT isn't what any of us were hoping for when we were dreaming of next gen cards in early 2020, it is, well, it's launching into the market that is the real world. And so if they can keep it around 380, it's not an excellent option in terms of what we were dreaming we would have by now, but it is for sure the best option at 380 compared to a stupid ass 3060. Because while these prices you're seeing on screen here are dumb, these ones are even dumber. And AMD employs smart people when they price out their products just like Nvidia does. They weren't blind to what people wanted, they just knew what people would pay in the current market. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I feel bad saying that at the end of half of my videos, my job is just to report the facts, what I can glean from my sources and tell you the truth. It's not to tell you what you want to hear. So if you do enjoy hearing the truth, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, liking this video, ringing the bell button so you don't miss the next videos and sharing this video with other people because that really does help so much. Then of course, if you have the money to give us like a cup of coffee a month, consider supporting Moore's Laws Dead on Patreon to support me and the rest of the team. And you'll get access to ad-free versions of podcasts that come out early, exclusive podcasts, the ability to ask us questions, and access to the Discord where we can talk about this video after it's out and you can ask me questions. So, yep, that's there for all of those who want to support us. Otherwise, to everyone else, as always, thank you for watching.